Thank you for watching Rage Gaming YouTube channel. Welcome into the channel. Today I will be explaining each line in the files for the mod CJ187 loot chest. Hopefully by the end, you will have a better understanding of how this mod works. Okay, so before we can begin, you will of course need to make sure that the CJ loot chest mod is already installed on your server and that you or someone has gone into your server since it's been installed. Doing this ensures that the CJ underscore loot chest folder that we need will be in the profiles folder on your server's files. If you have that ready, then we will move on. Open up whatever controls your server's files. I use GTX Gaming for my server stuff and WinSCP for my files. Anyway, go to your profiles folder or the folder that holds all your mods configs. Then go to CJ underscore loot chests. When you open this config there, you should have three files here. Loot chests underscore log dot log, loot chests underscore v106, JSON, and loot chest tools underscore v106 dot JSON. During this video, I will not be going into the loot chests underscore log dot log. Only the loot chests underscore v106, which is the main file, and the loot chest tools underscore v106 dot JSON, which is used for the keys. Starting in the loot chest tools underscore v106.json. Use control A to highlight all, then control C to copy. After you have it copied, bring it to your Visual Studio's code for the editing. Create new file with shortcut control N, then paste with with control V. I will be using example for this tutorial. Here at the top where you can start to change things is the name. The name is the class name of the tool to open any crate. At this time, the only items that can be used other than the keys provided in this mod are the sledgehammer, crowbar, and the lockpick. Nothing else will work. So make sure you're using only a key here in this mod or one of those items to open up your crates. Using a key voids the time that it takes to open though, meaning all the keys will open the crates at a neutral speed. The next line is time. The time is how long in seconds does it take to open the crate. 240 seconds is four minutes. I would recommend never going over that amount of time if you wanna keep your players interested. And that is even still pretty long. Putting a minus one in place of the seconds will deactivate the time it takes to open the crate. Over here is DMG, meaning damage. The damage is how much damage in percents the tool will take when opening a crate. The last line is desk for description. Here you can change the name and description of the keys. So when holding a key in your hand and hovering over it in game, it will say something different than what it normally says. To do this, you will add the new name of the key right here. Then after this line, you will put whatever you want, like what crate this key is used on, or that in order to use this key, you have to find crates in the military or whatever you choose. As soon as you finish right here, you will be done with this file. Make sure you take this file and validate it before you upload it. I will validate and upload all of them once I am done with all edits to these files. Moving on to the next and most important file now. Exit this page and go to lootchest underscore v106.json. Highlight all with the shortcut, control A, then copy with control C. Bring this to your Visual Studios as well. Use control V to paste it. Now scroll up. I will be using an example for this one as well. At the top is enable debug, which toggles log files. Zero will give you minimal logs and one will give you detailed logs. Next one down is delete logs. Delete logs toggle automatic deleting of log files after restart. Zero being don't delete and one being delete. Next is max spare mags, which sets how much spare mags will be possible when a predefined weapon is in the loot chest. You can have between zero and 999 in here. Don't know why you would want or need that much, but okay. Random quantity is the next line. This is a toggle for if the items in the crates come filled like food, drinks, loose ammo, and so on. Setting this to zero is off and one is on. Now we are on name. This name is different than the name in loot chest tools underscore v106.json. This name is just the name of the event. Put whatever you want here, it won't affect anything. It's your name for the area. The number on the next line right here means how many crates will be spawning in this event. If you have 10 crates out there on your map and 
You only want five to show at any time. You would have 10 chords here and make sure the number is set to five. That way only five will spawn at any one time in that event area. Down another line is POS, which means position. Here you will go into the editor and write down the chords for each crate and put them here. These are all the possible positions with orientation for where your crates will spawn in the event area. These have to stay in this format, which is X chord space, Y chord space, Z chords, then shift backslash to get the straight line. After the line without a space is Y for yaw, then another space, then P for pitch and R for roll. You will just highlight and replace what you need though. If done right, you shouldn't have to add or remove any spaces. If you want to add any more positions, just copy this whole line and paste it under one of the others. Then you just highlight and replace the chords in this line that you need. Then you need to make sure that the last line down here doesn't have a comma, like this. Next is the key class. Put what key or what tool you would like to open the crate here. If you leave in between these quotations empty, then the crate will spawn unlocked. Over here, this line is openable. This is to set how this crate can be opened. Zero is with key only. One is with key and lockpick only, and two is key, lockpick and tools. The next line is chest, and in this little section here, you can list all the possible crates that can spawn in this event area. This loot randomized is an item's chance, meaning if it's set to 0.5, then each item has a 50% chance of being inside when the crate is opened. 1.0 means no items in the crate. 0.0 is every item will be in the crate. Now going down one more is the light. The light is a light source inside the open crate. Zero is light off and one is light on. Down again is the loot. In this section, you put the loot that you want to possibly spawn in the crate. In this section, you can use class names of items, the LC predefined weapons, or the LC tables for more randomization. Here at the end of one of the loot items, you can see there is one of those vertical bars and some numbers after it. This is so you can set the rarity of this item to have a higher or lower chance of spawning in. 0.00 means 0% chance that this item will spawn, and 1.00 means that this item will spawn 100% of the time. You can do this with the loot tables as well, but you will have to add the rarity factors to each class name inside the desired loot table. Just don't try with predefined weapons, because it just won't work. This little section is the predefined weapons, which just means that these weapons will come with all the attachments you want on it. This is def name. Def name is the name of the weapon preset. Down one is weapon. Here you will put the class name of the weapon. Down again is magazine, which is the class name of the mag that goes with that weapon you just added with the class name. Leaving in between the quotation empty will make it so the gun does not come with a mag. In the attachments section, you will add all the class names of the attachments that go with that gun. Making sure the last one here doesn't have a comma. If you add something that doesn't fit on the gun, that piece won't show up in game. Also make sure that you only add the parts of the weapon that are not mags or optics. Anything but the mags and optics, if it actually goes on that weapon, you can put in this area. Next is optics. Put the class name of the optic that fits on this weapon here. If it doesn't normally fit on the weapon, it won't show up in game on the weapon. Next line is whether or not you want a battery in the optics that you just entered in the line above. Zero being no battery and one being at a battery. Now we move on the loot categories. On this name, this will be the LC tables that hold your predefined stuff. You can have a table that has a bunch of different weapons or other loot you're choosing. The next line is the loot and the presets in the table you just named above. This table right here will be forced to be guaranteed in the loot chest, even with higher loot randomized factor. And these are the loot randomized factors. This area is where you need to add all the loot's rarity factors to each class name if you wanted to guarantee the loot table up above to spawn. Now that is how these files work. If I went too fast or you forgot something, pause and rewind if you need. If you'd like to see what I'm going off of, you can exit this and go back a few to the main mod name area, where you can see your MP missions and profiles folders. Now scroll up and find at CJ187 loot chest. Double click that and go into at 
admins please read, then into documentation. Now to see what I use to make this video, click on the loot chests underscore explanation dot JSON. This description example file explains everything that I just did, but here you can read it for yourself if you want. Now, as far as I know, I covered every line in the two files that will require adjustments. If you'd like to see me in the Daisy editor placing crates and changing loot, you can click the video that pops up here at the end. Thank you for watching Rage Gaming YouTube channel. I appreciate you all. Like and subscribe.